Hello and a warm welcome to the 2007 Superside FIM Sidecar World Championship. Round one of the 2007 series, we travel to the east of Europe, eastern Germany to be precise, near the Czech border, and the famous road circuit at the town of Schleitz. Well, just to give you an idea, Schleitz is 2.361 miles around. The lap record held from 2004 at 1 minute 30.2 seconds. An average speed of 94.2 miles an hour set by Steve Webster and Paul Woodhead when they won the 2004 FIM Sidecar World Cup. Well, we're on board for a lap of the Schleitz circuit with the reigning world champion, Tim Reeves from the UK. Tim, of course, uh, champion for the last two years, along with his brother Tristan. But uh, this year, a change of passenger and more of that later. But first, this fabulous Schleitz circuit using the roads around the town of Schleitz and the neighbouring Obermansdorf. Off into the special infield section that links the two main roads around the Schleitz town in this eastern part of Germany. Fabulous circuit, you can see all the, uh, the wooded hillsides and the trees back onto the main road which takes the uh, local day-to-day -day traffic on towards the town of Plauen, some uh, 15 to 20 kilometres away. Undulating track, very, very fast. As I say, the lap record, 94 miles an hour average around what is used daily as a road. Well, this is coming in towards the end of the lap, back onto the new link section that was put in two years ago, cutting the circuit in half by length. The final chicane, where we've seen plenty of action over the years in this uh, Superside series, and back onto the start and finish to complete a lap of Schleitz. Well, sidecar racing always popular in Europe, and especially here in the east of Germany. Well, the uh, local German news crew caught up with the reigning champion Tim Reeves in the paddock and asked him what made sidecar racing special. It's fun. It's, ma uh, it's mad, really. You've got two people on, on a three-wheeled machine that does not turn left the same as it turns right, and it's capable of very fast speed, so it's, uh, yeah, it's very good. It's good, it's fun, it's... It's taken many years, but it's now it's easy to do. But I cannot remember it, it ever being hard. It was only hard when you first begin, maybe six, seven years ago. But now is uh, no problem. M much adrenaline, yeah. The because uh, you're only this far from the ground, and uh, it feels like you're doing 200 miles an hour. It's uh, it's very good, yeah. Well, perhaps one of the most extreme roles in any form of motorsport is the sidecar passengers' job, and. Uh, Patrick Ferrance has joined Tim Reeves for this event and we asked him what does the passenger do? With the stability on the bike we we can make the bike feel unsteady or we, we are a big part of the, the performance of the handling. Um, if we're not in the right place through the chicanes or, or around the left-hand corners it makes it harder for the driver and to get the, to get the line right in the corners. And the best part for me is, is when you're in a left-hand turn and the sidecar wheel is up in the air and it's drifting to the outside of the track and all three wheels are drifting and the sidecar wheel comes up, it's, it's a real good buzz, it's, it's brilliant. Well, the 2006 runner-up in the championship there, Pekka Piverinta, found himself on pole position after qualifying. Tim Reeves' his original passenger, Stuart Graham, was injured and Patrick Farrant had to step in. Their fastest time was disqualified and they found themselves down in sixth place on the grid. Well, from the qualifying times, all the teams were split up into the uh, special for Superside match race event. And the first heat of the match races saw Mike Roscher, the local German favourite that we're on board with now, involved. And some tight action going on with uh, Michael and Bernd Grabmuller ahead of us on the Austrian Team Tyrol Delta machine. The Grabmuller brothers really showing well this year, an improvement on their previous form. But it was Ben and Tom Birchall who led the first of the heats. Grabmuller obviously getting a bit of damage off the start line and that bodywork causing some uh, problems for the Austrian pairing. Well, these match races, four heats, just off three laps with six machines involved. So very uh, quick-fire action all through the grid. 
and the winners progressed to semi-finals and then on to the finals and it was Ben and Tom Birchall that were leading this heat initially ahead of Steve Norbury but then uh, just in the distance there you can see the white machine in the field of corn and that put Ben and Tom Birchall out of action in the match races. Mike Rusher there finishing second to Steve Norbury in the match race heats. Heat number four saw the top six from qualifying in action and it was Pekka Piver into stalling on the start line and lucky to be avoided by the following crews. On board with Tim Reeves and new passenger Patrick Farrant into the first corner. Jos Moser and Ule Waffler, the Austrian-Swiss pairing. They're getting very out of shape into turn one and disappearing off the circuit. And ahead of us, the new pairing of Marcus Schlosser and Adolf Harney, the Swiss team. The all-Swiss team in the black. Adolf Hanny, of course, a regular on the scene. Schlosser has been missing for a number of years, but uh, was one of the top runners in the late 90s. But it was Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrant that won their heat. On to the semi-finals. Once again, just three short laps around this slight circuit. Reeves on the Eastern Airways LCR Suzuki getting a little bit bogged down at the start and pushed out by Pekka Piverinta on board with Piverinta and Cartiala on the Team Suzuki Finland machine. They're chasing Marcus Schlosser and Adolf Hanni ahead of Tim Reeves and Patrick Farrance. And winner of this heat automatically through to the final, the grand final of just six machines. Alan Schofield and Steve Thomas already into the final, courtesy of winning their semi-final, which was held in slightly damp conditions, I have to say. But Tim Reeves putting the move on Schlosser and Hanny. The reigning world champion stamping his authority. He only needs to uh, get a fast time. He doesn't need to win, but that's not Tim Reeves' attitude. He wants to win every race that he's in. And going past Pekka Piverinta and Timo Cartiala to take victory in the second of the semi-finals. So then it was the three-lap final. This is the important one, 25 points at stake for the winner, the first real race of the 2007 World Championship. And once again, quick start in Marcus Schlosser and Adolf Honey from the front row, take the lead from Tim Reeves and Patrick Farrance as they head down towards the, uh, the fast, flat-out, curvy section of this slight circuit, about 160 miles an hour when they come down to the bottom of the hill and then have to break really hard into this tight left-hand bend before the link chicane and a bit of a mistake from Schlosser there, losing a bit of drive out the corner. And yes, Tim Reeves, Patrick Farrance take the lead. Big slide from that LCR Suzuki. 200 brake horsepower these machines are putting out. Pekka Piverinta and Timo Cardiala running in third position. Well, just going straight past Marcus Schlosser and Adolf Harney in that flat out section. So that's a brave move by the Finn. We saw that last year. They uh, really are a brave pairing. But at the end of the quick three laps, it was Tim Reeves and Patrick Farrance in their first event together, taking victory number one in the 2007 series and the maximum 25 points. Second for Piverinta and Cardiola from Finland, Schlosser and Hanny, the Swiss in third. Delanoy includes the French in fourth, Moser and Waffler fifth, Alan Schofield and Steve Thomas sixth, Norbury, Rocher, Galros and Sean and Mark Hegarty round out the top 10. So the three lap dash for points out of the way. Now the 22 lap main gold race and Pekka Piverinta and Timo Cardiola there on pole position. Second on the grid there, Marcus Schlosser, the Swiss rider. And there Patrick Farrance, Tim Reeves' new passenger for 2007. But one disappointed man not going to make the start, local favourite, Mike Rocher. Unfortunate for Mike, electrical problems on the warm up lap. Yep. Well, for this 22-lap uh, racing prospect, I'm joined by Kenny Kay. Yeah, hi, Ian. Nice to be back. 2007, it's a new season for sidecar racing. Round one here, Eastern Germany, we're at Slights, and the race 
gets underway. We're on board there with Team Suzuki Finland, Pavarinta and Cartiala. But Ian, I'll tell you something, we've got some changes this year, haven't we? Yeah, lots of changes, but uh, wow, that's a poor start from Cartiala from pole position, isn't it? He must be bogged down in about, uh, what, eighth place there at the moment. Yeah, and he's already managed to pick up some debris on our onboard camera, isn't that normally the way? That's nice of him. Yeah, a lot of changes. We've lost from the series Taro Manon and uh, the runner-up in 2005 third last year and Pavarinta's teammates, a big shame there. And, uh, of course, Tristan Reeves, the two-time world champion with his brother Tim, retired for the time being. Stuart Graham stepped into the fold, but he was injured in uh, qualifying this weekend. And Patrick Ferrant flew over from the UK on the Friday to join Tim Reeves on Saturday, and uh, they've already won the first race of the opening round. You know, the boys are natural passenger, obviously. Andy Laidlow, of course, another absentee from 2007, having to uh, lead the outfit in the garage. But uh, meanwhile, out front with Schlosser and Hanny. Oh, uh, and that looks really like, starts. Yeah, look, looks like Jos Moser and Ule Waffler just taking the lead there, going through that chicane. And that's Richard Gatt and Paul Randall streaking through to the lead as well. Oh, and now Tim Reeves and Pat Farrens going through to third ahead of Marcus Schlosser. So that move that... Uh, Moser put on Schlosser, really lost him some momentum, dropping from first to fourth in the space of a few hundred yards. Yeah, maybe he missed a gear or something, but certainly that's uh, not what you'd expect from him. But they go through now, and we're on again board with uh, Pavarinta Cartiala. They're making up ground now after that bad start, and this should be some interesting racing. Yeah, the Finn never one to uh, ask for any room to get through, and he's behind Sebastian Delanoy. And uh, another one of the changes this year, Gregory Clues, the passenger for Sebastian Delanoy. Greg used the passenger, his father, John, in last year's series, but now on with the fast Frenchman. And Tim Reeves looking for the lead. He's got past Moser and Waffler. So from sixth on the grid, Reeves up to second place, halfway round lap two, chasing his uh, friend. Richard Gatt and Paul Randall as the rest of the field streak through there, the black Sasson Yang machine of the Australians. But Tim Reeves, Pat Farrant, second position, chasing Richard Gatt and Paul Randall. And they've gone through into the lead. So, round lap two, Reeves and Farrant's lead. So Pekka Pavarinta looking to go up a position, fifth going, looking for fourth if he can get it. Here he comes and the power's on, he goes straight through. Well, sidecar racing at its very best here at Slides is round one of this FIM series of 2007. And oh, that's uh, Richard Gadd about to get shoved unceremoniously out of the way by yeah. Marcus Schlosser, I think. Yeah, very hard move by Schlosser going into that left-hander, and that's pushed uh, Richard Gatt back to, well, at least fourth place, if not uh, even more if he stayed on the track, hopefully. So tell these boys, these are uh, racing side cars, not bumper cars. It's not the way to treat your competitors. Uh, so this now, the battle for second place. Tim and Tristan Reeves, we can see a little dot in the distance. Marcus Schlosser and Adolf Harney, big slide from Schlosser there, and has that let Pekka Pavarinta up into second place? Yes, empty track ahead of us now, and there's Pavarinta, Schlosser chasing hard now. Yeah, Richard Gap back down to fifth place as the rest stream through, and there's uh, Jos Moser, well, he's dropped back quite a way as well, but out in front, Tim Reeves, Patrick Farrens, we've got to get used to saying that pairing. Do you think Farrance will stay with uh, Reeves now for the remainder of the season? I think that's quite likely now, Kenny. Uh, they've already won the opening race of the 2007 series in that match race final. And uh, they look to be a good pairing. And we're on board with Stacey Seller, the Australian crew. And that's Tim and Tristan Reeves putting them a lap down. So a bit of a baptism of fire for the Aussies. They've uh, come all the way over here. The Team Aircom F1 Superside Racing Team. And oh, Pekka Piverin a straight past as well. But, uh, yeah, these guys making the long trip from the other side of the world and uh, really is a different kettle of fish for them. And there's Marcus Schlosser now just coming up behind Stacey Seller, trying to find a way past the Aussie. But I'm sure once they get used to these European tracks and the longer races that... Uh, they'll be giving a better account of themselves. Well, they'll be remembering the day that uh, Steve Abbott arrived in uh, Australia, of course, to race sidecars over there. 
and promptly, I think, just about disgraced them all while he was there. But uh, because Steve Abbott, former world champion in his own right. Yeah, back on board with Pekka Piverinta and uh, coming up against some of the slower riders now on the outside. I think Guy Horner was one of those having his first world championship race. But still out in front, Tim Reeves and Patrick Ferrant. But they do seem to be slowing down a little bit. Paverinta is getting a lot closer, we can see. And there are the tail enders. Marcus Schlosser there in third position at the back end of that group. Schlosser coming up to the second of the Australian machines. I noticed that's a new colour scheme on uh, Reeves' outfit for this year. Any reason for that? Yeah, just the confusers, Kenny. Is that what it is? Big red stripe down the nose cone, which wasn't there last year. Oh, and, and a change of letters. Oh, Schlosser getting caught up in amongst the back markers there. That was Guy Horner on the other black machine. Won't be happy about that, will the Swiss driver? That's cost him a bit of time now, but look at the leaders. Pavarinta really closing down on Tim Reeves and Patrick Farrance now as they come through this chicane. And what's the gap back to Marcus Schlosser? Well, that's five or six seconds, I'd say. Yeah, and Adolf Harney won't be happy with that either. So uh, Pavarinta really got the hammer down, hasn't he? And Timo Cartiala, his uh, normal sidekick now for the last season and a half. Recovering from his bumps and bruises from last year, if I remember rightly. Well, I he think did every... sample the tarmac a few times. Everybody had bumps and bruises from last year, didn't they? But uh, yeah, look at this now. Really, that's less than a second. Well, it's less than half a second. Glenn Jones from the Isle of Man there, just about to go a lap down on the two leaders as they come out of the chicane onto the start and finish line. Tim Reeves looking over his shoulder nervously there. Is that a problem with the machine, I wonder? Because we don't normally see Tim backing it off this early. No, certainly not. But it is a long race, 22 laps, and Pavarinta is fast. Reeves set, the, uh, set a new lap record in those match races, but Pavarinta wasn't far behind him. Now, the battle for fifth position at the moment. Steve Norbury and Paul Napton ahead of Ben and Tom Birchall. So a good scrap between the Brits. And Michael and Bernd Grabmuller, the Austrian pairing, going well as well. Just a question now of what's going to happen at the front because uh, Tim Reeves, I don't know whether he's got it. Here they come again. Reeves is still holding that lead. Yeah, but there's nothing in it now, is there? As they thread their way through the chicane and uh, coming back out onto the fast section. Long race, though, so I don't think Pavarin will want to make a move too early. We speak maybe too soon. We do indeed speak too soon. I think Reeves has got a problem. Well, that did seem a little bit easy there, didn't it? Yeah. That was just straight. Unless he's just decided to slot behind Pavarinta and study his racing line and then have a come back a little later on. But Well, it's not unknown for Tim to try and do those things, is yeah, it? Yeah, one way or another. Game. But uh, no, Pavarinta are out in front at the moment. And clear track ahead of the Finnish uh, Team Suzuki Finland pairing. More back markers up ahead, though. Yeah, here's that uh, infamous corner from last year. Rename it Steiny Corner. Steiny Corner. Well, he survived that one, which is good, but because uh, Steinhausen not with us, racing York Steinhausen, which is which is a shame. I don't quite know what he's doing with himself, but it'd be good to see him back racing. Oh, listen to that! Engine. Listen to that Suzuki engine down the start and finish straight yeah, hunting got, there. That got, is a problem. He's got a problem. Definite problem for Tim Reeves and Patrick Farrance. Now this is Marcus Schlosser and the uh, genial Adolf Harney. Well, gaps there. Is it obtainable for second place? Uh, Reeves has definitely got some kind of problem. I don't quite know what it is. Yeah, Schlosser really being in close down on uh, Reeves now as Pavarin are pulling away at the front of the field as they come down that hill through the, uh, the road into the town, that is, and then off onto this little link section. So Pavarin are now pulling away at the front as Tim Reeves and Pat Farrance definitely have some kind of mechanical problem. You could hear the engine hunting down the start and finish straight. Yeah, Pat's got his hand up to uh, warn Schlosser that they're not as fast as they should be. Now the power's oh, yes. going down. And, well, that's just... And that's uh, Delanoy. Well, Delanoy didn't make it through. I'm surprised about that. Sebastian Delanoy and Gregory Clues there. So now we've got Pavarinta out front. Schlosser second. Tim Reeves is third, but not for long as Delanoy goes through. That's a question now whether Reeves can keep this outfit running to the end of the race and pick up some points after his early uh, successes here at the slight circuit. 
Yeah, I mean, he's lost about five or six seconds in one lap there, hasn't he? So yep. uh, He might end up down in about 10th or 11th in stage like this, but I'm sure he's trying to squeeze what he can out of that engine and at the same time trying to protect himself. There they go. Yeah, and that gap between yep. uh, Pavarinta and Schlosser's coming down as well. So Schlosser and Delanoy locked together in second and third. Steve Norbury there. Uh, lapping Glyn Jones on the DCS racing machine. Nice bright colours. Yeah, Chris Lake there in the uh, in the sidecar for this year. So here we are, we're on Walgren Schlosser and Harney again. Well, look, they've closed right yep. up on Packer Pavarinta now. So what is going on in this race, Kenny? Well, Pavarinta, I can't believe he's got a problem with that outfit because it seems to be running, you can hear it's running quite well. And now look, the first three all together. Yes, yeah. we've got a three-word tussle here for the checkered flag when it does eventually go out. If they don't all end up in the gravel. Oh, oh look at this. Schlosser stunking oh. straight through into the lead. Once again, Sebastian Delanoy not taking the opportunities to get past at the same time. He's as quick as Schlosser, but he just hasn't had the luck getting by people, has he? Catching at the wrong place on the circuit. It's uh, yeah. no particular corners, but... Well, that seems... The top speed on that Pavarinta machine was really good as they got onto the fast bit, but the acceleration out of the corners doesn't seem to be there, does it? Maybe the tyres cooked, maybe... On a, oh, yeah, because look, Delanoy going yeah. through as Delanoy's well as to come through. back into the chicane to complete another lap. So well, it's all changing. We've had two, three different leaders of this race now, so... Yeah, and this is, uh, well, that's Tim Reeves coming under attack from Steve Norbury, so dropping back another place... Oh. Norbury up to fifth position ahead of Tim Reeves who's now down in sixth but back at the front Marcus Schlosser and Adolf Harney the Swiss pairing on that Hanny racing machine out in front they've got nothing ahead of them apart from some uh, tail enders but they have got something behind them and that's the Frenchman Sebastian Delanoy managed to pick up a dead fly on that camera lens as well which is doesn't matter how small you make these lenses they still manage to find the flies Great shot through that chicane yeah. there. Adolf Hanny looking back. Where's Delanoy? Well, he has lost a few seconds. I think that was getting past... Uh, right, Timo Cardiala and Pekka Piverint are now behind the Australians who uh, don't seem to know the blue flags Ooh. there. And, oh, that's tight. Oh, and that's Ben and Tom Birchall on yeah. the white machine, and they're in fourth position chasing Piverint in third. So, could Ben and Tom Birchall get on the rostrum? Well, look at that. Oh. Yes. That answers the question, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does rather. Like, ooh, sweep straight past the poor man and just leave him. Oh, he's coming back at him. So Pavarin's has not given this one up. This yeah. is for the corner. Top speed on that machine's OK, but it hasn't got the acceleration. Pavarin back up to third, and this is coming in to complete the race. Pavarin back in third position. Schloss is out front. Birch has gone past him again. Here they come. Check it flag, then. Well, great win for Marcus Schlosser and Adolf Harney there. Who Who's is gonna it going to be second? Delanoy cruises Who's across the third? line. Oh. That's the back marker in... Th and it's going to be... 16 or... Is it Birchall? Birchall. Birchall. Birchall, Birchall gets, gets it, yeah. third. Look at that. Schlosser, Delanoy, Ben and Tom Birchall, their first ever podium, third. Paver into fourth. Norbury, fifth. Galros. Reeves got seventh. Dave Molyneux in eighth. Schofield, ninth. And Milan Spendel, tenth. Oh, smiling for sure, and so they should be. That's a good way to start the season. Yeah, Adolf's uh, young daughter there having her first podium. Well, that's the first win Adolf's Hanny's had for quite some time since the days with uh, Klaus Klaffenbock. And Ben and Tom Birchall there, obviously very happy to be on their first podium. And a smiling Sebastian Delanoy. Gregory Clouse's first podium as well. So... Yeah, lots to smile about as the uh, photographers get those all-important pictures. Well, first for everybody, by the sounds of things. It's the way to start the 2007 season. Excitement at its very best in world sidecar racing. You couldn't really ask for any more than that now, could you? No, it's been a great event here at Schleitz. And, uh, well, talking about first, we've completely forgotten. That's Marcus Schlosser's first world championship victory as well. So the Swiss national anthem playing... Last time, I think it was the legendary Rolf Bieland that was up there in first position. But there you go. It's 41 points then for Schlosser, who now leads the championship from Reeves and Farrance in second place. Just one point behind the two Frenchmen, Delanoy and Clues, and they're sharing that third position with Pavarinta and Cartiala. Well, Ian? In the team standings, Hanny Racing Team, 
clearly out in front ahead of the team Eastern Airways. The French Team Sanseb 72 in third ahead of Team Suzuki Finland. Lockside Racing, Reliance Racing in the top six. Brands Hatch, June the 10th, that's round two. Can that man put himself on the podium again? Well, join us there to find out.